Attackers love passwords, and we as security professionals hate them for their weaknesses, and end users either write them down, share them, or use weak passwords that can be easily guessed. But attackers are not after your password anymore. They can do the same damage by only knowing your password hash. The bad news is that Windows keep all password hashes in a protected area in memory. If attackers can hack into that protected area, they can access password hashes for every account using that Windows machine, not only your password. You think this is bad? Wait till you learn that attackers can use these hashes to connect to remote resources also using pass the hash technique. And this is how attackers move inside your network usually undetected. Now, do you want to see all this in action? I'm sure you do. So in this demo, I'm going to show you how to hack into this protected area in memory and get access to all these hashes we talked about. To make this demo more interesting, we're going to steal the hash of the local administrator account and pass that hash to a nearby Windows machine and gain access to sensitive information. This is known as pass the hash technique. So let's start our demo. Let me start by opening a command prompt and verify what account I'm using and whether it is a local admin on the machine or not. You can see that I'm running under an account that is member of the local administrator group. Now let me quickly clean the screen and browse to my tools folder and I want to find the tool called Mimikatz, which is the number one forbidden tool by Microsoft and there is a good reason for that. This tool dumps password from memory as well as hashes. Now let me run the tool and clean my screen and I will start by attaching it to a debugger by typing privilege debug. You can see I get an error, but don't worry, this is intentional. The reason is I need to run the command prompt with elevated rights. So let me quickly open a command prompt with run as administrator, browse to my tools folder and run Mimikatz again. Now I will try to type the same command, debug privilege, and you can see the command run successfully. Now this is possible because by default, the local administrators group has debug privilege, which we can quickly verify by opening the local group policies console. Browse to Windows settings, security settings, user right management, and then search for debug programs. Here you can see that administrators have the right by default, and you can see that assigning this right can be a security risk. Now let me go back to Mimikatz, and now I will enable logging so that any output generated by this tool will be logged in a text file, as you can see here. Now here is where the magic starts. I will type secure LSA, LSA stands for local security authority, so secure LSA and then login passwords full to dump the hashes stored in memory for every account who logged on to this machine. Now all what you see here in the screen is a memory dump of all passwords in memory. Here is my user Hamar and you can see different type of hashes for my passwords stored in memory and available to me using this tool. And this is what allows Windows to enable single sign-on in the first place, so that I don't need to type my password each time I access network resources. That's why Windows store password hashes in memory. The most interesting part is the NTLM hash of my password. Now let us try to find another password hashes stored in memory, just for fun. And as you can see, there are a lot of them. Here is an account called L3Admin, which is level 3 admin. It seems one of the level 3 engineers logged onto this machine, perhaps to solve a problem. And we can see the NTLM hash for this account available for us. Let me try to open the log file and search in the log file just for clarity and try to find other password hashes, specifically the password hash for the local admin on this machine, which is called the master account. We can see the domain is demo1, which is the name of the machine, and this means this is a local user, and here is the NTLM hash of the master account, which is the default local administrator on that machine. 
I will copy that hash and open a new notepad and paste the hash there for our next step. Later in this demo, we will use this hash to connect to another machine called Demo3. Using my account, which is Hamar, I don't have access to connect to a Demo3 machine, which is a nearby machine. In fact, let me prove it to you very quickly. I'm using psexec to connect to Demo3, and you can see I don't have admin rights on that machine. But if I am lucky enough, the local admin password of my machine and Demo3 machine is the same password. And since I have the hash of the local admin password in my notepad, I can use Mimikatz to have a functional command prompt using the context of the local admin just by passing the hash. You can see the full command I use in Mimikatz. I type secure LSA, then the username as master, the domain name as localhost, since this is a local account, and the NTLM hash I got earlier in my notepad. Now you can see I got a new functioning command prompt window. Let me put both windows next to each other. The left side window is running under my account Hamar, and the right side window is running under the built-in admin account. Now the confusing part is when we type who am I on both windows, I would expect the result to be master in the right side window, which is the local admin account. But don't worry, this is just how things work with these tools. To prove it, you remember my account could not connect to Demo3 machine as you see here again. Now on the right side window, you can see I'm using psexec again to connect to Demo3 machine. And the tool is taking time to establish a remote session on Demo3 using the master account password. And since my machine and Demo3 machine both have a local admin account called master with the same password, this command should work. And by passing the hash, I have now a functional command prompt on a remote machine. If I type hostname on both terminals, you can see on the left side, the hostname is demo1, and on the right side, the hostname is demo3. I can even browse the file system on the remote computer, locate a secret folder, and access the credit card information data. Mission accomplished. What you can learn from the demo is that the debug privilege is very risky privilege. You should use group policy to prevent anyone, including administrators, to have such right unless you have specific needs. Also, your users should not be admins on their machines. They should be running under a normal account and perhaps use another separate admin account. As we saw in the demo, we used the hash of the local admin account to connect to a remote machine because the local admin password is the same across all machines. You should always make sure to have different local admin passwords across your machines. And to do that, you can use the solution from Microsoft called Local Administrator Password Solution or LAPS, L-A-P-S. Also, as a best practice, you should have your admins working with two machines, one machine to access email and browse the web, and a separate machine to perform highly privileged tasks. This way, if a malware was delivered through the web or email, it cannot do much damage because your admins are using separate machine for admin tasks. Now, one of the two machines can be a virtual machine, and there is a great solution from Microsoft to implement that. It is called the Privileged Admin Workstation that I encourage you to look at. Finally, you can disable the local admin and the guest accounts on all machines just in case. Here are some good references for you to learn more about some tools and technologies we talked about so far.